Workforces are becoming more flexible and fluid than ever, and companies are facing increasing challenges managing contingent labor pools and navigating the new gig economy. In this episode of Uptech Report, I interview Glenn Laumeister, the CEO of Allwork, a company building the technology to solve these complicated 21st century workforce management issues. Glenn discusses the depth of Allwork's end-to-end platform, the technologies they use to help companies manage a complex, dynamic workforce, and his previous experience as the founder and CEO of Coach Market. Thank you so much, Glenn, for joining me. I'm excited to learn more about All Work, how it got started, the market fit that you're you're uh, feeling a need for, fitting a need for, and then also the future. How are you innovating, and where are you heading in the growth trajectory? Uh, to start us off, what year did All Work start? When when did you join them? So I joined about three years ago, uh, and there is two founders who had built the business before that for a couple of years and bootstrapped it, uh, and so they actually you know built the business sort of for themselves. Uh, and then spun it off into a separate company. Your previous, uh, you were founded founded a company and your CEO, that led into this. Tell me about that. Yeah, so I founded a company called Coach Market, which was a marketplace for executive coaching and corporate training consultants. And what I was very interested in was this whole idea of online labor marketplaces, helping people and companies connect um, to find each other and work together kind of as part of that early thinking around the gig economy. So, you know, in certain verticals, there's lots of people who are already working as consultants or in some way a flexible on-demand worker, but they have a really hard time finding those gigs. And so, you know, it's great being a gig worker if you have enough gigs, but if you don't, it's not so great. Uh, and and we, we surveyed a lot of people uh, from coach market in that executive coaching area, and we found that they spend 50% of their time on business development. Mm. And that's not really what they want to do, right? They want to be coaching and working and helping people develop and helping companies develop. So that was a problem we were solving there. And that was a true marketplace. That led me to the opportunity at All Work, which is a little bit different because we're more of an internal marketplace. So we, a company comes to us, they have their people, they already have their team, and we help them manage that team at scale. So it's really more workforce management and then payroll services, because they, what they want from us is not so much the sourcing of the talent, right? They have the talent. What they want is a better way to manage them more efficiently and also to some degree to figure out how to attract more talent. So one of the biggest problems we're solving for our clients with all work is that they have a hard time attracting gig workers, right? So they're typically employing like full-time people and they have kind of a very rigid, you know, staffing model, uh, which is the way it's always been. And now they have a, they're having a hard time finding people because there's record low unemployment. So it's a challenge even to, to, to get employees or gig economy because the growth of the gig economy, right. now you're right. having to attract those same people that could, they could jump on a gig here. So your platform helps the All Work platform helps in that endeavor? That's right. So we're, we're really connecting these gig economy workers with their employers at scale. And what we found is that, just as you said, you know, the number of flexible or freelancer gig economy workers is going up dramatically. Um, and the companies are saying, hey, I, I can't find enough people to, have, to schedule eight weeks in advance, 40 hours a week, because they don't want to work that way. So what do I do? And what they have to do is adapt. Uh, to this new gig economy and create a more flexible staffing environment. Now, uh, you guys, where are you headquartered from? We're in New York City. And now, but this being five years in, how big is the team? So we have about 20, 25 people. Fantastic. Uh, we also leverage a lot of consultants as well. Yeah. Uh, we, we practice what we preach. And then, then the growth here of the end clients that you are serving, what do they look like, the, the, the type and the style, and, and do you have a, a certain base that you're serving right now? Yeah, so our target is a consumer brand, and that brand wants to employ a flexible workforce to help them better engage um, their end customers at retail. Uh, so whether it's selling, merchandising, marketing, events, you know, a big trend right now is that the brands are putting more and more people into stores. So most people don't realize that but if you walk into a Bloomingdale's or a Macy's, half the people you'll see there in the store actually work for the brands, not for Macy's directly. Interesting. Right? Now, if you think about it as a brand, those people are working all over the country in a thousand different stores. 
how do you find them, attract them, uh, maintain a, a relationship with them, schedule them, pay them properly. So it's all about that connectivity and that engagement, and that's what our software helps them do. When you talk to the workers, they, they say, you know, here's what I'm looking for. Uh, and more and more, it's about flexibility. Um, so there's lots of studies out there, in particular with the younger people, millennials uh, and Gen Z, and they said, you know, I, I really want to work in a more flexible way than maybe my parents did. Um, and so, you know, one, one really amazing statistic is that in five years, 75% of our workforce will be millennials or younger. So these are digitally native people. They want to basically get their jobs on an app. You know, they want to get like automatically matched to a job. Mm -hmm. um, and so they want to be able to work that way. And really today's technology does not allow for that. How many um, clients and then also the end uh, employees are you actually managing on your platform? So we have about 50 different brands that we work with today. Uh, and we're probably have between three and 5,000 talent any one time working all over the country, um, you know, in basically two to 3,000 different locations all across all 50 states and some in Canada now. Awesome. Let's dig into the, the technology, the platform itself a bit more, the, uh, the technology itself. Tell me, uh, how is it um, different than other solutions out there? And, and how is it also maybe the same of, that we can understand and create an analogy to? Yeah, sure. So we, our concept is one end-to-end -end platform that helps our customers manage everything from the time they have the people to the time that people get paid. So if you think about that process, what are they doing? They're budgeting those people, they're scheduling them, they're approving timesheets. And these are hourly employees we're talking about. They're approving the timesheets, they're training them, they're reporting on all of their activities. They're figuring out, you know, sort of from a performance basis, who are the best people and running analytics on that. And then they're also in need of payroll, right? So our platform actually pays them as well. And so this is an important part of the gig economy that a lot of people don't realize is that you can have workers that don't, you don't have to commit like 40 hours a week to them as long as they in the onboarding process are told this is a flexible assignment. So what we really specialize in is our customers want to use someone, let's say five to 30 hours a week all year long. So because of the nature of what they're doing, it's not really project work. It's more like, hey, I need you to be at Bloomingdale's every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday for the next you know, eight weeks, right? So there is consistency for the gig workers. So they're able to plan ahead in terms of having relationships. Um, but what's really important here is that what our customers don't get today is they don't get software built for how they work. So they might get like a scheduling program is kind of generic, a budgeting program, they use Excel. So most of our clients are using Excel or Google Docs, or they, they try to find something to make it work. What we've done is taken our vertical, which is now, let's call it consumer product sales and marketing, and we built specific technology just for that vertical. And so a lot of what we do is a similar function you might have in some of the software programs but typically those are single point solutions like just scheduling or they're generic and they don't really adapt that well to specific verticals. So uh, this is a great use case of taking a vertical and then putting lots of different solutions into one makes this vertical very happy because then they don't have to worry about having That's to right. piecemeal That's it. Right. Now, another piece of technology I believe you mentioned in a previous conversation we had uh, was even tracking then these uh, workers uh, by IP, uh, geolocation, so making sure that they're there. Right, right. Maybe more about that technology. Yeah, so one of the things that we found is really a problem is just this connectivity to the talent. So imagine your brand, you're based in New York, you've got people in California and Seattle and Texas, and you don't really know where they are all the time. Are they where they're supposed to be? And so we have an app that talent uses, and they check in to each shift and they check out of each shift. And we actually verify their GPS, using GPS technology, their location. So we have the address of the store, let's say it's a store in our system. And so if they're not in the right location, we tell them, hey, you're not in the right location. <laughs> and we also tell their manager. And so what we're doing is we're really helping both sides be aware of what's happening in their business. Is that an automatic communication or is that manual that that happens? Oh, it's all, automa all automatic. So if they show up in the wrong place, they're going to get a little thing from their phone and say, oh, you're in the wrong place. You're in the wrong place. 
And by the way, when your manager knows that you're in the wrong place, so you better talk to your manager. Uh, and so you guys work it out, you know, kind of thing. So we don't get involved in like that performance management. Our clients use our data and our technology so they can do it better themselves. But it's a huge, huge advantage because, you know, let's say the person was supposed to be there from 10 to five, they show up at 10.30, they're probably billing you for 10 o'clock, right? Because there's no manager present. And that's not good for either side, right? So we create really a standardized way of doing it so both sides know that, hey, I'm there when I'm supposed to be, I'm getting paid the right time, the right hours. So that's one example. The other example is that because we're using the mobile app, the talent is able to send information from each shift to their manager and to the company. Hmm. So in the past, they'd fill out like timesheet two weeks later, they put like sales information and other things, and it was kind of too late by then to do anything about it. Now the manager will get a shift report that has photos, it has notes from the shift, it has sales data, anything else that they want to capture, that information gets collected immediately, sent to the manager and then sent up to the corporate like head of sales, let's say. So they get real time sales information, which we're finding that some of our clients were getting sales information 60 days later, mm. right? So now they have actionable data. So a big thing underlying our system is creating actionable data that they can easily get their hands on. Anything you can share that another CEO could learn from of hurdles you were able to overcome, uh, whether it's, um, it's product market fit or just even uh, the, the platform itself or the technology, Any, anything you can share? Yeah, sure. So I think one of our big learnings was that the enterprise buyers were really not ready for this five years ago. Mm. Um, we had some good customers, the customers that we had loved us, but when you go talk to them about it, you know, Uber wasn't really in the mainstream then. And so they didn't really understand what an app could do, what, you know, GPS was. Like the enterprise buyer really needed a lot of education. And the biggest change I've seen from that point to three years ago to now is that now when we walk in, a lot of our customers are saying to us, I am looking for technology to help run my business better. Mm -hmm. Even three years ago, they were saying, tell me what you do again. And you know, like, Oh, I get it. Like it was like more of a process, but now they're seeing other things out there and they're saying, why don't I have something like Uber to manage my people? Mm -hmm. Right. So that's really helped us in terms of the sales cycle, less education, more about like we, we can move from education right into ROI. Do you feel that you've crossed the chasm now of, of now getting the uh, early majority or are you still in kind of the early adopter phase? Um, what would you say? Yeah, so we, I think we went from that, you got to really focus on early adopters to more of a mainstream now. And so, you know, we're talking to client or potential customers that a year ago, two years ago said, uh, you know, we don't really know why we need it. You know, like, okay, you seem nice. You seem, you know, like this is good, but like, we don't really know why we need it. And then they call us up and be like, now we know why we need it because we, we planted something in their brains that came back to them, right? and said, okay, yeah, this is pretty dumb that we're doing buttons on spreadsheets. There should be a better way. So that's a helpful data point for other SaaS companies out there that are developing new technology that you might have to place a data point and wait a year or two for it to grow. Well, that's right. You gotta be patient. You gotta be patient. So five years from now, where do you see the company? Yeah, what we're really trying to do is to kind of democratize this whole way that you work with your employees and so in the old days, you know, you'd buy some huge system from like Workday or Kronos or something, and it was a huge investment and you had to integrate everything. And it was kind of like these software things were made to do huge, huge implementations, but really hard to integrate and hard to get started with. So our vision is to make really our platform very accessible to people. So you think about it in five years, someone should be able to come to our platform, sign themselves up, get started without really having to spend a lot of time working with us with no implementation and make it really easy in terms of the training of their employees and their teams. So the idea is that I could, I could decide one day, hey, I'm, you know, I'm spending $2 million a year on this talent. I don't have a way to measure my results. I go on there, I start everything up. You know, we do like one phone call or something with them and then away they go, right? There shouldn't be like three months of pain getting started look at what we're focused on is I think we'll stay with hourly workers because it's a huge opportunity there 
But you look at sort of those medium skill levels, so sort of 18 to $40 an hour, there's a lot of other jobs in there that require a certain amount of skill that lend themselves to a flexible workforce. And you have workers who will stay in that vertical forever. They take traveling nurses, for example, in healthcare. Those people tend to stay in those jobs for 10 or 20 years because they have a certain skill, but they have really no tools to help them manage that, that workforce. And so we like those kind of verticals. So we're definitely gonna expand horizontally. I think for us is really understanding, you know, like 80% of our platform is the same. There's 20% that will change the user experience, the reporting, kind of what data they capture. The industry but, but, specific. Yeah, so that will be customized, but the rest will all be the same. And so that's how we're looking at it. Like we wouldn't go into something where we had to customize 80% of it. We want to customize that 20%. What hurdles do you imagine you're going to have to face and difficulties in order to overcome and uh, realize this vision? I think it's like the, the behavior of a lot of enterprises when they think about their different types of workers, right? And what you, what you see a lot happening now is if you go to these conferences, for instance, and you're talking like the head of HR or even the CEOs, they're, they're looking at their workforces differently. Like, okay, you know what? I'm not gonna have just all full-time workers and I'm not gonna have just employees. I have all these different consultants, freelancers, you know, whatever you call them that are important to my business long-term. And so how do I, how do I work with both of those groups, right? So what I see is it's hard to predict how fast that will go mainstream. I think it's already there for a lot of companies, but it's like, is that a year, three, five years down the road? It's, it's hard to say. Would you say that, that Uber has changed the, the workforce or companies like Uber? Yeah, I think it has changed a lot actually, more than people realize because a lot of people, they, they, especially younger people look at that and say, wow, Uber has given me a new way to make money with no commitment. Isn't that amazing? Like literally from the worker perspective, I can work one day a week, two days a week, or I can quit and I don't really quit. I just don't turn on the app. Like it's amazing. Like you don't actually quit. You just don't turn on the app. <laughs> so I think that's really having a profound shift in how the younger people look at work especially, you know, in their 20s and 30s, and especially if they're hourly, right? And now it's requiring the other organizations out there, other companies to have to shift the way they interact with this. That's right. Workforce. That's right. Because someone may, you know, you may interview someone and they say, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to have a job. I want to work for you for as long as it works for me. And so the balance of power has really shifted, mm -hmm. right? Also record low unemployment now, and that's going to continue, I believe. So I think all of a sudden now the workers are saying, well, that's what you want, but I want something different. And, and, and fundamentally, that's kind of what we're trying to do is get in the middle of that and help both sides, you know, reach a common ground, right? Because there is a, there's a misconception that the gig economy means, you know, I work four days here and never work for that company again. That does happen, but that's really the minority. The majority of it is employers want some kind of workforce they can count on, and most most workers want some kind of employer relationship or relationships that they can rely on for income. So, you know, neither side is just towing, doing like, you know, shot in the darks kind of thing. Yeah. It doesn't really work. So that's what I think is interesting is to see how this new generation comes up and says, you know, maybe I'll work for two or three people like Uber, Lyft, Via, whatever, but uh, I'll probably find one or two that I, that I click with and it works for me and I'll do that for five years but I'll do it flexibly. Like if I don't want to work on Saturday, I just don't turn on my app. Like that's true on demand. Like that's crazy. Like you think about it in the old days, like, no, if you don't show up for work, you didn't get fired. Like that's kind of going away. Wow. Yeah. Of all the upcoming technologies that are, that are coming down that you see, what are you personally most excited about uh, coming into fruition? Yeah, I think, you know, it's sort of a, a, in the place of like AI and machine learning and thinking about how you can eliminate kind of repetitive tasks, redundant tasks, things that humans don't need to be doing, right? Like, because people are, are very worried about AI replacing jobs, but we see it a little differently. We see it as if I'm a manager and I'm scheduling 100 people, can I use AI so that it doesn't take me 20 hours a week, but it takes me two hours a week? 
Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be a much happier person because I can spend my time on value added things, not just scheduling. So we're starting to use those technologies and we really are focused on making uh, people's lives easier, their jobs more efficient, you know, really eliminating the stuff they hate to do. Right. And then you think about it from the talent side. Um, if I have a very, very well developed um, profile, I can get job requests sent to me that I actually want. How are you personally innovating? Where, where do you look for for the latest uh, to stay current? Obviously, we talk to our customers a lot about what they're looking for. But to a certain degree, they're not technology people. So they're not going to say, I wish you could use AI to do this. Because that's not their background, right? <clears throat> and so I really focus on the, the ideas of other industries and where they're innovating. So let's take AI machine learning. Like, where is that working today? So when I'm reading, you know, Crunchbase or whatever I'm reading, and I say, okay, wow, this seems to be really working here. Can we apply it over here? Because, you know, what I would say is workforce management, staffing technology in general is behind other areas in technology innovation. And that's why it's an opportunity for us. So I really try to learn from other areas, other verticals, other applications and say, oh, the problem they're solving is also one that we need to solve. As a, as a leader uh, and a CEO, are, are there any podcasts or books or audiobooks that you're reading or listening to right now? Yeah, I, I think there's one book that I read recently that was really interesting, and it's a little bit out there, but I'm a big fan of classic rock. And if you look at now all these guys like the Fleet, uh, Mick Fleetwood from Fleetwood Mac, Eric Clapton, Keith Richards, they've all written their autobiographies because they're getting older, right? And if you look at a rock band, it's actually quite similar to a startup. And so if, when you read these books, you start having these weird flashbacks to like, oh yeah, that's happened to me when I started this company. And so I'll give you an example, like Fleetwood Mac, right? Mick Fleetwood, who is a leader, his book is very insightful. And so sometimes these rock bands are sort of like Uber, right? They take off like crazy and they have all this demand and making all this money. And then a lot of times they collapse because the demand just goes away or they didn't manage themselves well and they have all these personal issues and drug issues and whatever. The drug thing is probably a little bit more prevalent in rock and roll than in startups. But and then some bands reinvent themselves, right? Like Fleetwood Mac, they, they came back three or four times from setbacks. He'd say, oh, you know, we made this album and it was terrible and no one bought it and we were really depressed. And then we came back and we did another one and it was a gold record, platinum record. And so when you're reading this, you're like, wow, they have to really be smart and have their finger on the pulse of their, of their fans, of the market. And they'll say, oh, you know, like this kind of music now is no longer in fashion. So we had to start adding synthesizers or whatever it was. And you're like, wow, this is like, so it's the idea the CEO has to be thinking like now, but also three to five years ahead. Where can folks go to learn more will be a, a good first step for someone to take? Yeah, go to allworknow.com. So that's our URL, allworknow.com. Um, or they can also uh, connect with me on LinkedIn as well if they want to get more information. But uh, our website tells a pretty good story. Um, and certainly uh, on LinkedIn, I'm happy to connect and talk to anyone else. Have you seen a company using AI, machine learning, or other technology to transform the way we live, work, and do business? Go to uptechreport.com and let us know.